Hello, friends. In today's exploration, I'll be delving into the captivating realms of an action-packed sci-fi horror film titled Cold Skin. Get ready as this enthralling story takes center stage, promising an unfolding narrative that is bound to keep you on the edge of your seat. We are never very far from those we hate. For this very reason, we shall never be truly close to those we love. The haunting thoughts of the young Englishman persist as he sets sail for a remote South Atlantic island to work as a meteorologist. While his thoughts weigh heavily on him, Captain Axel approaches, lighting a cigarette and mentioning that they're almost there. In September 1914, they finally arrive on the island, greeted by no one. The man has been sent to replace another meteorologist stationed there, but there's no sign of anyone. Captain Axel accompanies the young man to search for the previous meteorologist to ensure his safety. They come across a lighthouse and knock on its door, but there's no answer. The young man forces the door open and discovers the only other person on the island, Gruner, the signal technician, who greets them both coldly. When Captain Axel inquires about the former weather official, Gruner answers that the man they're looking for died from typhus. Unbothered by their presence, Gruner continues to walk around in the nude. Irritated, Captain Axel and the young man leave the lighthouse. As Captain Axel bids him goodbye, the man wanders around the island, contemplating the life that lies ahead. Similar to the previous weather official, he must delve into the intensity and direction of the winds for 12 months before someone replaces him. Upon returning to the cabin to organize his belongings, he discovers the previous meteorologist's diary, unveiling his name as Aldor. Inside, he finds sketches, a photograph of Aldor's wife, and even a lighthouse drawing with strange creatures beside it. The next morning, he discovers strange rock circles on the sand. Heading near the coast with a telescope to begin his work, he peeks through the binoculars and observes a naked man doing a stretch, preparing for a seemingly unproductive day. Later that night, while engrossed in reading, he hears rustling outside his door, initially thinking it's Gruner. However, the noises intensify with scratching and growling silences. Suddenly, a reptilian hand emerges at the bottom of the door, agitated when he steps on it. As more sounds emerge, he hides under the floorboards. They attempt to enter his cabin, attacking it, but upon realizing it's empty, they cease. When the footsteps stop, he looks through a small hole in the floorboard's door. The creature peeps through, prompting him to poke its eye with a knife. Overcome with fear, he locks himself underground for the entire night. He contacts Gruner the following day, imploring to be allowed into the lighthouse, but Gruner declines. Fueled by determination, he returns home, spending the entire day reinforcing it with a newly acquired rifle from the bag into the cabin, feeling prepared to confront the unknown monsters. As night falls, a swarm of beasts emerges from the darkness, slowly approaching the cabin. He braces himself, systematically shooting them one by one. Eventually, he's compelled to start a fire due to their overwhelming numbers. The fire forces them to flee, but it engulfs the cabin. Escaping his burning house, he's fortunate as rain arrives before the cabin is completely consumed. The next day, he observes Gruner leaving the lighthouse and discreetly follows him to the rocks. About to ambush Gruner, a blue female sea creature attacks, and he aims his gun. Gruner prevents him from shooting, revealing her vulnerability. Seizing the opportunity, the young man offers Gruner some supplies in exchange for shelter. Gruner acknowledges him as a friend, and later, they head to friend's cabin to gather supplies. Discovering that the previous weather official didn't die from typhus but from sea creatures, friend learns from Gruner. Despite Gruner's insistence to return to the lighthouse due to the approaching sunset and potential creature attacks, they transport supplies into the beacon. After a long walk, Friend passes out. Awakened by the female sea creature licking his hand, he finds he's been asleep for two days. Friend checks their ammunition inventory with Gruner, who explains that the creature, called a toad, is loyal like a dog, even to a cruel master. Fascinated by her seemingly unique nature, Friend gazes at her, 
but Gruner warns against complete trust, believing her calm demeanor conceals evil intentions. Gruner then shows friend more of the lighthouse, expressing wonder about Gruner's decision to stay on the island despite the chance to leave. Gruner asserts he'll never return to the civilized world, now the master of his destiny. Still, friend expresses intent to join when the next ship arrives, earning Gruner's good luck wishes. Later that day, friend reflects on how a few days of recent isolation have altered him. While fixing his things, he's taken aback by the creature's presence, but continues to observe her as she obliviously consumes a candle. Attempting to explain the candle's purpose to her, Gruner calls him, instructing him to bring his rifle. As night falls, friend watches Gruner prepare for the impending attack. Gruner provides instructions and fires the flare gun, marking the start of a long night. Meanwhile, the female creature wails into the sky and a horde of sea creatures approaches. Gruner begins shooting, but friend, overwhelmed, walks backward until he loses consciousness. Gruner is left to battle the terrifying swarm alone. The following day, Gruner is furious at Friend's perceived ineffectiveness, directing him to fetch water instead. When Friend returns with the water, he hears pounding and wailing in Gruner's room, discovering Gruner engaging with the sea creature, prompting him to leave abruptly. Later that day, Gruner and Friend share lunch in an awkward silence. Friend, burdened by guilt and discomfort, cannot confront Gruner. However, Gruner breaks the tension by banging the table, informing Friend that he only has one last chance. That night, Gruner captures the creature's attention with the flare gun. When the monsters appear, Friend is frightened once again, prompting Gruner to lock him outside on the balcony, leaving him to fend for himself against the creatures. Despite hearing gunshots and Friend's pleas, Gruner falls asleep. As the sun rises, Gruner is surprised to see Friend alive, covered in blood, staring blankly at him. Months pass, and the two men establish a routine as the creatures attack several nights in a row, compelling them to keep vigil. Days remain monotonous, while nights grow longer, with nature being their only source of sanity. They manage to coexist, with Friend tasked with fetching water and Gruner maintaining their weapon. One day, Friend speculates that the creatures are returning to the lighthouse to reclaim the female sea creature. However, he still wonders why she allows her species to be killed and why they don't attack on some nights. Gruner is indifferent to the creature's motives and intends to eradicate them entirely. Later, a companion revisits his worn-out cabin to reclaim possessions, discovering his altered appearance in a mirror. He trims his beard, seeking a semblance of his former self. En route to the lighthouse, he encounters a colossal whale skeleton, collecting a fragment. Despite a lack of attacks that night, he perceives the laws governing the conflict as often more harrowing than the battles themselves. Nevertheless, they seize the opportunity to ready themselves for the impending assault. While the companion explores, he encounters the creature, approaching her for the first time, touching her chilly skin and christening her honoras. Exploiting her as both a servant and a sexual captive, Gruner one evening invites his companion, friend, to engage in a game of chess. While playing, the young man shares his observations and theories about the sea creature's existence. However, Gruner insists that he cease talking and concentrate on the game, pushing friend to execute a checkmate. Suddenly, Gruner grabs his firearm, aiming it in the direction behind the young man, sensing the presence of a creature. It turns out the sea monsters are launching an unexpected attack. They dash to the elevated section of the lighthouse as an increasing number of monsters swarm in. Armed with rifles, they resist, but the sudden onslaught proves overpowering. Nevertheless, they opt to ascend to the lantern pane where the light casts its glow. Regrettably, Gruner sustains a severe bite on his foot during the hasty ascent. After securing themselves within the pane, they endure the night as the creatures attempt to breach the glass partition. Believing his demise is imminent, Gruner serenades a tragic love song until sunrise, prompting the monsters to retreat. In the morning, Aneris tends to Gruner's injured foot, using her tongue to assist. Depleted of supplies, ammunition, and willpower, they recognize their inability to endure another conflict. 
Later that day, Friend spots a distant ship while exploring and rushes inside to retrieve the flare gun. Fearing isolation, Gruner restrains Friend from shooting, pinning him down. Anaris intervenes to shield Friend, infuriating Gruner, who exits with the flare gun. In frustration, Friend confronts Gruner, expressing fear of abandonment and the prospect of facing the battle alone. Afterward, Friend discovers a means to communicate with Anaris by revealing a bone-carved boat, hoping she comprehends. Anaris guides him to an abandoned rowboat on the shore, away from the lighthouse. At the lighthouse, the young man informs Gruner about the boat, but Gruner claims awareness, recounting how a Portuguese man used it to escape a shipwreck, only to be killed by the creatures. Gruner assumes the ship's cargo, which includes dynamite, is waterlogged. Meanwhile, Friend expresses interest in diving into the shipwreck using an atmospheric diving suit, but Gruner disapproves, deeming it a suicide mission. One afternoon, the young man paints the rowboat in the hope of making it functional. He hears a distant howl and discovers Anaris enjoying a swim nearby. Stripping down, he cautiously approaches her as if to kiss her, unbeknownst to Friend and Anaris. Gruner watches from the lighthouse while Friend reads a book. Gruner hands Friend a diving suit, changing his mind after witnessing their interaction, secretly hoping Friend will perish due to jealousy. The following day, they row to the shipwreck using the painted boat. The young man explains that a rope tug is their sole means of communication, with three tugs indicating a need for air supply. Wearing an old diving suit, Friend searches for crates containing dynamite while Gruner controls the rope from the boat. Underwater, Friend locates the containers, hooks them up, and, after securing several small boxes, encounters an infant sea creature peering through his suit. Startled, he tugs the rope, panicking as more creatures surround him. Gruner watches the rope, seemingly on the brink of abandoning Friend. However, as the young man frees himself from the diving suit and swims up to the boat, Gruner promptly assists him. Upon their return, they check the crate and discover that only one box among the others contains dry explosives. With winter approaching, Friend and Gruner plan to lure as many creatures as possible into the lighthouse before detonating the planted dynamite to scare them away. However, on the anticipated night, no attacks occur. Three weeks pass rapidly, and Gruner grows impatient, waiting for the major assault. Finding Gruner freezing outside one day, Friend urges him to go inside and temporarily disable the detonator. Once, while waiting for Anaris to catch lunch, Gruner discovers she brought starfish instead of fish. Enraged, he kicks her, blaming her for disclosing their plan. Grabbing Friend's shirt, the infuriated man proposes a new plan, leaving the door open to lure the creatures inside for an ambush. That night, Friend leaves the door open while Gruner takes a higher position, preparing to detonate the dynamite. After hours of waiting without an attack, Gruner, following Friend's suggestion, drags Anaris beside him and forces her to wail, hoping to attract the creatures. Meanwhile, a sea creature attacks Friend at the main door, and although he escapes, more creatures enter. He rushes upstairs, informing Gruner that the creatures are now inside the lighthouse. The creatures attack, but Gruner struggles to detonate the explosives, prompting Friend to sprint to the top and reconnect the detonator. An explosion erupts, claiming the lives of numerous sea creatures. Dissatisfied, Gruner seeks a second set of explosives closer to the lighthouse, knocking both Friend and himself unconscious. When Friend regains consciousness the next day, he frantically searches for Gruner and manages to wake him up. The young man feels relief as Gruner stirs and begins to sing a song, joining in this time. Meanwhile, massive chaos ensues around the beacon. Gruner utilizes a spear to dispatch wounded and dying creatures on the beach. Upon observing a dead creature adorned with a necklace, Friend perceives the species as more civilized than Gruner depicts. In response, Gruner seizes the pendant and flings it into the sea, expressing his disdain. Later that evening, while keeping watch for the next attack, Friend overhears Anaras and several other creatures mourning the loss of their kind. Enraged, Gruner approaches him and reveals that he had rescued Anaras as a baby trapped in a net years ago, 
believing she owes him her life. Anaris disappears, but Gruner assures Friend that she will return as she always does. Despite Friend's apparent regret over their actions, Gruner remains cold and shows no remorse for the creature's death. One morning, Friend arranges stones in the sand, placing a carved bone in the center in the hopes of attracting rescuers. Meanwhile, Gruner continues to prepare for an explosion to deter the creatures, yet there is still no attack that evening. While fixing Gruner's preparations one time, Friend discovers a wedding photo of Gruner with the words, Love, 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 written on the back. Recognizing the woman in the image as the same person from the diary, Friend realizes that Gruner is the former weather official and that Gruner isn't entirely devoid of human compassion. Consequently, Friend abandons his day counting, understanding that everything, including the very reason for his visit to work, has been forgotten. Survival becomes the sole focus, as no work is accomplished beyond staying alive. Friend ventures into the shore to retrieve the carved boat, encountering a child sea creature that approaches him. Behind the child stands Anaris, appearing more confident and accompanied by her troops. Friend senses a desire for a truce, but Gruner rejects it, insisting on having Anaris back. She refuses, and Gruner repeatedly declares, No one leaves Gruner. While walking back to the lighthouse, Gruner suddenly fires a flare at the child, fatally striking him in the chest. Anaris looks at Friend with doubt and disappointment, leaving him alone. As Gruner continues firing at them, Friend confronts him. After a struggle, Friend throws Gruner to the ground and stabs his leg. Enraged, Gruner regains the upper hand, attempting to murder Friend with an axe. In a crucial moment, Friend calls him by his real name, insisting he is not a murderer. Gruner pauses, drops the axe, and utters, love, 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 as if regaining his former self. Gruner steps outside and gazes at the starry night while the sea creatures attack and ultimately slaughter him. A few months later, the next ship arrives to bring Friend's replacement. The captain mistakenly calls him Gruner, observing a shocking state of existence, which he doesn't bother to correct. Gruner leaves Friend with an unwavering legacy, taking his place. The young man embraces the role, thinking that this is the missing piece he was looking for. The new Gruner stands by the balcony, gazing at several boats, while Anaras runs into the sea, swimming freely from one realm to another. Friend finds salvation, believing a world war signals the end of humanity as we know it, but it gets worse. He left one mysterious past behind, only to discover the same thing on an island. Fleeing in search of peace through nothingness, he finds a monster-plagued inferno instead of silence. In the end, he discovers peace after learning that there is no such thing as life without love, hope without love, or humanity without love. Don't forget to subscribe for more captivating videos like this one. Your viewership is truly appreciated. Thank you for watching.